The side stick commands G load in the pitch axis, roll rate in the roll axis, or it could even command something called a direct relationship to the flight control surface, and much of this has to do with what law you're in, and specifically also for normal law anyways, what phase of flight. Joe Munoz, One Step Prep and OneStepPrepAcademy.com. Let's get into this G load roll rate and gaining a better understanding of what does this even mean? It's specific to the Airbus product. If you've flown anything other than an Airbus product, you're probably not too familiar with this. And we're gonna start really with laws first, and then we're gonna dive into the relationship. Now we have four laws. What they are and what protections you have is beyond the scope of the video, but just suffice it to say we have normal law, we have alternate law, we have direct law, and we have something referred to as abnormal attitude law. We later have mechanical backup, which is commonly confused and thought to be a law, but it's actually the absence of all laws. It's a whole separate discussion. I'm just gonna put it over here. Mechanical backup is indeed not a law. Okay, now, side stick relationship. In normal law, we have in the pitch axis, G load, roll rate. This is gonna get very simple in just a moment. Bear with me here, folks. In alternate law, we have G load in the uh, pitch or in the uh, elevator, all right, in the pitch axis, but we have direct relationship in the roll axis. In direct, we have a direct relationship with both, and in abnormal attitude, we very much do have uh, G load, and then later on it goes to uh, direct. It's kind of that, like a pseudo alternate law. We're gonna get through all these. By the way, normal law has different phases of flight where this changes. Anyways, let's get into it. Look, where you are coming from, whether that's a Boeing product, a CRJ, an ERJ, or a 172, what you are used to likely is taking the control column, commanding an aft input, which tells your elevator to deflect up, which in turn will bring the nose up. So you're effectively used to aft elevator equals uh, up input, which will bring the nose up. Likewise, pushing forward would be the exact opposite, and the ailerons are identical. A left or right aileron input directly drives, even if it goes through a computer and a hydraulic, no Joe, it's hydraulically actuated and I get it, all right, just bear with me for a second. R what I'm getting to is that a 10% aft control column deflection gives you a 10% elevator deflection. A 20% aileron deflection gives you a proportionate 20% aileron deflection as well. Now this is not true in a fly-by-wire Airbus setup with G load roll rate. And I'm gonna explain why. You see the side stick, and we're gonna go so simple with examples in the simulator. I'm gonna take you in the simulator to validate this for you. In the 320, what we have is a side stick that talks to an ELAC or an elevator aileron computer. The elevator aileron computer interprets the aft input as a positive G change. In other words, when you pull this side stick aft, I'm effectively telling my elevator aileron computer I want a positive G change. Now the positive G change that you're requesting in a clean configuration, you're it's going to only allow you to pull up to two and a half G's, the limitation in normal law, right? So let's say you're commanding based on input a positive 1.4 G. So it says, hey, that aft input is a positive 1.4 G's. Now, Watch how simple we're gonna get here. I'm gonna go over here to the elevator, and we're gonna, what, what positive is interpreted as in the ELAC and then later commanded to the elevator is nose up deflection, all right? So the elevator deflects up, which in turn brings the nose up. Now as far as how many Gs you're commanding, 1.4 Gs, that may or may not be a proportionate displacement of the elevator surface to what you actually have on the side stick. So if you're pulling back 20% of its full range of travel, you might not get 20% elevator deflection. You're gonna get the appropriate deflection that would yield a 1.4 G uh, rate of bringing the nose up. Now, in the ailerons, it's the same thing. If I command a full side stick like that, a full aileron input, a full aileron input is 15 degrees per second rate of roll. So if I go 20 degrees left, that doesn't mean the aileron deflects 20 degrees, or 20%, I should say, to the left. 
What it really does is it deflects the aileron appropriately to give you, say, your three or four or five degree rate of roll per second that you're commanding by your 20% displacement. To further validate this, let's go to the sim for just a second. Take a look at this video I recorded in the simulator. You see me take the thrust levers to toga thrust. I then grab one of the engine master switches and I fail the engine master, one of the engines, I turn the engine master switch off. And in failing the engine, what we see is now the airplane has a tendency to yaw and roll in the direction of the dead engine. However, on the flight controls page, you can see that the flight spoilers and the ailerons are deflecting to stop or to prevent the aircraft from rolling. Now this is despite there being no side stick input. You gotta understand, the fact that there's no side stick input means that I want zero roll rate. I'm commanding, by not touching the side stick, I'm commanding no roll rate. In other words, airplane, I want you to not roll. I want you to stay straight and level. And so when the engine fails and the aircraft starts to experience this yaw and roll, the airplane now detects that it's rolling and it realizes that the pilot's input is one of no roll. It do, we don't want to roll. So the airplane takes it upon itself, the ELAC specifically, to command aileron input and flight spoiler input to counter the rolling tendency because the roll rate that you're commanding is zero. Does that make sense? Think about that. If it doesn't, go back and pause it and play it again as always. Okay. Now, Let's further look into this. You'll notice as airspeed increases, the jet is smart. It realizes now I have sufficient air flowing over the aileron that actually in order to maintain the no roll rate being commanded by the pilots at the side stick or the lack of input, I don't need flight spoilers anymore. So it actually stows the spoilers for you. And we see that clearly on the flight controls page. Now let's turn our attention to pitch working with an Air Macau model from one of my students that came through here and trained. So the engines are mounted under the wing. I'm going to get up close here. The engines are mounted under the wing. The result of that is that thrust application results in a considerable nose up tendency. Now this is not as true for engines that are mounted on the tail, but it is very true for any aircraft, 737, 777, 747, 767, you name it, A320, 340. If the engines are mounted under the wing, the engines upon spool up will have a tendency to bring the nose up and upon thrust reduction will have a tendency to bring the nose down. Now, this is masked normally in normal law. Why? Because remember, your side stick, if it has no input, zero input, okay? What I want the jet to do then is to maintain level flight. No input, level flight, even if I add power. So you can see here when I advance the thrust levers, with no side stick input in normal law where we have G load being commanded by the side stick, the tendency for the nose to come up is fairly minimal. In fact, the aircraft will actually reduce and bring the nose back down and not allow the engines to bring the nose up by applying subtle elevator inputs to keep the nose in a no positive G change or no pitch up moment setup despite the lack of side stick input. Likewise, upon thrust reduction, where we would expect to see a considerable nose down tendency, the same applies. Elevator input added to keep a no negative G or no nose down tendency because there's no input being commanded on the side stick by the uh, flight crew. Now, this is true when we have G load and roll rate. There's another example where I'm going to show you here Whereas we degrade in laws and we start to have the side stick move into different relationships with the flight control surface, it actually very much now uh, transitions into what you would traditionally expect flight characteristic wise, just as any other aer airplane or aircraft you have flown. So let's go now into alternate, G load, and then later direct, right? Indirect, I'm actually going to go to direct first because it's a little more assertive. Indirect, your side stick relationship is direct. In other words, if I grab this side stick and I deflect 50% aft elevator input or 50% aft side stick input, 
I would expect to get 50% F elevator input. Same is true nose down. Aileron, same way. Left turn, 20, 30, 40% deflection on the side stick will yield a 40% deflection on the flight control surface. Now, the result of that, of course, is that if I'm in direct law and I apply thrust, the nose will very drastically come up because the elevator is no longer applying inputs to give you a no G change. It only applies inputs based on the side stick input that will move the elevator proportionate to the amount of side stick deflection that you're commanding. So if you're commanding nothing, the nose will drive up with that thrust application and it will also drive down with the thrust reduction. And likewise, in the case of an engine failure, that aircraft will yaw in the direction of the dead engine, in this case we'll say number one, and it will roll over aggressively with no aileron input to counter the roll tendency because the side stick relationship is now direct instead of roll rate. Hopefully that is absolutely clear now for you. Now keep in mind, these relationships do change, and that's where I want to transition the video to next. In normal law, we have G-load roll rate. This is the best case setup. Keep in mind, normal law also has different phases of flight, including ground mode, flight mode, and flare mode. Now in ground mode, it's what it sounds like. It's when we're on the ground after engine start, you have the, uh, the little square on the attitude indicator that is very indicative of the fact that you're in ground mode. And furthermore, why is this the case? Well, because if I'm on a two-dimensional playing field, such as on the ground taxiing or taking off, I can't command a positive G change because I can only attain one G on the ground in this axis. And so therefore, in order to get the flight control check completed and to successfully rotate the jet off of the runway, we have to have a built-in mechanism by which to move flight control surfaces, which is this ground mode that moves them in a directly proportionate rate to the side stick deflection. So when you pull back on your flight control check 100% side stick deflection, you will get 100% elevator motion in the direction you're commanding. Same is true for your aileron. And it has to be that way because the ELAC doesn't understand a positive G change in a 2D environment such as you being on the ground taxiing or taking off. It's not until we transition airborne that the direct relationship between the side stick and the flight control surface transitions five seconds later to the flight mode where we now blend into G load roll rate because now we are in the air in this three dimensional playing field where the ELAC very much can give you a positive and a negative G change. It is a command that it understands now in flight. That's also by the way why you have the limitation on the autopilot five seconds after liftoff or 100 feet AGL until you can put it on because your side stick relationship and the flight control computers, the logic is blending from ground mode to flight mode where we now have, rather than direct, G load and roll rate. As we degrade down in laws, we also have an alternate law G load in the pitch axis, but we have direct in the roll axis, and then direct is direct all the way around, and finally abnormal attitude law with G load and direct. Now I do want to make note of flare mode. We talked in normal law about ground mode and its direct relationship with the side stick. We talked about flight mode and the G load roll rate relationship. Let's now look at flare mode. In flare mode, you are still very much in G load roll rate. Nothing's changed there. But from our flight control laws video, which is a very lengthy video inside of our course at onestepprep.com, I very highly recommend you look at that if you haven't already. What we describe there is that the jet takes a, a, a snapshot of the attitude, pitch attitude at 50 feet, and then at 30 feet, it applies a nose down pitching moment that you need to counter with side stick input. Now, why would they do that? Why would the manufacturers do that? Well, very logical. You gotta remember, they're well ahead of their time. This was 80s technology, folks, and I gotta tell you, when you gain an understanding of what the jet does, it's very impressive the fact that we did this, or they did this in the 80s. It's amazing. So with that being said, imagine for a moment that you're flaring, and in the flare, you command the nose up, and then you relax the pressure. Now before I go further, just think about any airplane you've landed. Any airplane, could be a 172, a Piper Warrior, or a 777. 
Just hear me out on this. You almost always, in fact, go watch any other video of a cockpit landing and you will know this, okay? The control column input is never a continual aft input, touchdown, and let the nose down. It's never one constant aft input. It's always what appears to be like a pumping motion. Now, is that the formal term for that? Probably not, but that's what it looks like. It's aft input neutral, aft input neutral, and you're trying to finesse the landing. You're trying to arrest the sink rate. Why? Because ultimately, as you apply aft elevator, the elevator is very much moving, proportionate to the column input, and as you go back to neutral, the elevator is going back to neutral. The result of the elevator going back to neutral is the nose continues to come down, and therefore it drives you to have to continue to apply these aft elevator inputs to soften the landing. Well, that's not true in the A320 if you don't have a flare mode, and let me explain. Imagine for a moment that you pull the side stick aft, and you command positive G change. The nose comes up. Now you neutralize the stick the way you do in any other airplane you've landed. You're now commanding no G change. Now the elevator would very much move with no input from you here to give you no G change, which means I don't want the nose to come down or up for that matter. So what it'll do is it'll flare and it'll hold that pitch attitude that you just commanded and then it'll stay like this and just hover over the runway indefinitely if you do no input here because ultimately the elevator is still moving to give you your desired command or lack thereof of zero G change. And so that's why at 30 feet the nose starts coming down by design to prompt you to apply these aft elevator inputs so that it feels natural and normal for any pilot transitioning from a non-Airbus product airplane. And that, my friends and my family, is the side stick relationship video that relates to G-load roll rate and all the various laws and the phases ground flight flare in normal law. As always, I hope you found value in the video. Go back and watch it again, push play, learn the easy way, as I say, with your friends here at OneStepPrep.com. Juan and Joe, your friends in training program, success. I'll see you in another video.